Howdy, Cowpoke. Today we're looking at horse tips and tricks that you may not know as a new player and possibly even a veteran player. We're going to be going over buying tips and tricks as well as just riding tips and tricks. Watch out for those trees. All right, so what is the best horse in the game? What should you buy as a new player? There's so much stuff to look at when you go into the stable for the first time. Tons of horses in here, tons of saddles in here, and what does it all mean? We're gonna go over all the quick stuff to learn really quickly. So in a nutshell, every horse has four basic stats. They have their stamina levels, their health levels, their speed, and their acceleration. They all differ but it doesn't really matter too much and we'll explain why as this video goes on. Of course, when you first look at a horse, you'll see the horse's base stats. We'll look at the Silver Dapple Pinto Missouri Foxtrotter. Now that is a long name. As you can see, it has stamina is a little over halfway, health is at halfway, speed is set at seven bars and his acceleration is set at five. Now, what can we go off of this? Now, as you level up your horse in bonding, its health bar will actually increase as well as its stamina bar. Now, you can get horses that have a full health and full stamina bar after bonding level 4, but they already have to start at about 3 quarters of the way. And then every horse can increase its overall speed and acceleration by 2 bars just by putting stirrups on the saddle that you have on it. So of course, every horse is going to be different depending on if we go Missouri Fox Strutter here or if we go the Mustangs, they're going to start out a little different. As you can see, these ones start out a lot lower and their, their max is a lot less. As you get higher up, it kind of increases a little bit. If we go down to like the Claude Druber, I believe, one of the roll horses, it starts off down here pretty high up. As you can see, its stamina and health bar start, start pretty high. And as you get it ranked up, it actually can almost get fully maxed, all those speed accelerations down. So which horse is best? Which horse should you buy? Technically, all of this stuff doesn't really matter in the long run. Of course, if you're running a lot of horse races and you want to have the fastest horse in the game, then of course you're going to want to look for that horse that can get a max speed like some of the Criolas here. The Criola can actually get a max speed and a couple of horses can as well. But if you're just in it for overall gameplay, any horse will do because the tips that we're going to give you here will actually make all of these horses fantastic. So the ability to make any horse in this game great for overall performance is of course because of its equipment. The saddle. Now I have quite a lot of saddles in the game and we'll go through a few of them. The Nakadosha saddle is the number one saddle in the game and it's unlocked at rank 35. Now the reason it is the number one saddle in the game is you guys can see its stats down below. There are some saddles that have a few different stats that are better, but this is the only saddle in the game that has a stamina drain rate. As you can see, it's negative 35. It is the only saddle in the game that has this drain rate and it has the ability because of this drain rate to actually add stirrups to the game to make it even better. As you can see, you can add stirrups to the Nakadoja saddle all the way up to the hooded stirrups. These hooded stirrups will actually give it an additional negative 50 in that drain rate, giving the Nakadoja saddle an overall drain rate of negative 85. Now, the only other saddle that comes close to that is the new Upland saddle, which is part of the prestigious bounty hunter role that actually has a stock drain rate of negative 65, as you can see there. But the problem is this is an improved saddle. And if you actually click on this saddle, you cannot go into the stirrups and upgrade those at all. So it is set at negative 65, which isn't too much less than negative 85, but it is a little bit. So to go over that again, all improved saddles in this game have a base drain rate. Like the Upland saddle, negative 65. I actually also own the Rattlesnake Valquera saddle, which is actually the most expensive saddle in the game. This saddle costs 20 gold bars. It has a drain rate of 50 as well. But just like all improved saddles, you cannot upgrade the stirrups at all. Unlike the Nakadosha saddle, it has a drain rate, plus you can put stirrups on it to give it negative 85. So it is still the best saddle in the game, although any of these improved saddles with a negative 50 or better probably won't be too bad. I've been running the Upland saddle on El Cheapo for quite a while without no problem at all that negative 65. To explain it more, I've gone ahead and equipped the cheapest saddle in the game on El Cheapo. So we are double El Cheapo right now. As you can see, we have zero stirrups in here. So once you get a good saddle, anything that's not an improved saddle, including Nakadosha's saddle, you want to go in here to your stirrups. These do unlock throughout various levels in the game. And this is what I mentioned earlier about the 
extra speed and acceleration you get, but that's not what's most important here. The most important thing to look at is the drain rate. As you scroll up these, you can see you slowly start to get a drain rate on your saddles. We got negative five, negative 10, negative 15 plus an extra speed and acceleration slot. Then we have negative 20, negative 25, negative 30, negative 35, and the last acceleration spot for speed and acceleration. And then we keep going up, we have negative 40, negative 45, all the way up to the hooded stirrups would give you a negative 50. So you can make any saddle pretty good in here by unlocking these hooded stirrups. Unfortunately, the hooded stirrups unlock pretty late in the game, I think rank about 50 something. So the Nakadosha saddle unlocks way before this and gives you a pretty good drain rate to start with. And one little secret with the Nakadosha saddle as well, since it has a drain rate of negative 35, and we all know on stirrups, when you increase the drain rate with stirrups, you also unlock some of those gold speed and acceleration. The actual Nakadosha saddle has a hidden third gold bar. If we go back here real quick, we take a look at El Chipo's actual stats. As you can see right here, with the Nakadosha saddle on El Chipo, he has three gold bars for speed and acceleration. That's one more than it actually shows in general stats for any horse. So keep that in mind if you're looking at saddles, this definitely makes a Nakadoja saddle pretty good to have. So what can you do if you don't have the Nakadoja saddle right now? You can buy yourself a more expensive horse, of course. Horse, of course, of course, to get more acceleration on your bar. As you can see right now with El Chipo, we have not even half, not even half right now, which with a cheap saddle, is a little bit of a problem, but with a good saddle, it's not too bad at all. I did go ahead and put the cheapest so saddle on the game for El Cheapo. I'm gonna give him a little bit of food real quick just to get his cores up. You wanna make sure to keep your horse's cores all the way up. I don't do it very well at all. Let's go ahead and give him two apples. Two apples are, are good for sure. And we have the cheapest saddle in the game with no stirrups right now. So if we start running right now, you can see that our stamina starts going down pretty fast and we'll probably run out fairly easily just by riding a little ways. Now, one tip to get around that is on controller, just use your left stick. Every five or six seconds, I believe it is, you can just press in on the left stick. It would be L3 on PlayStation. And if you can watch my stamina real quick, boom, there I got some back just like that. So you never really can run out. You actually can go pretty far. Uh, if you just keep clicking L3 right there, it's about every I think six seconds I counted, maybe a little more. It all depends on what you're doing, but you definitely can get most of your stamina back by running that, that trick right there. So make sure you guys remember in that to be able to get some of your stamina. Another trick as well is to not run in a full gallop. Right now we're kind of running at the canter speed. It's not full gallop. The Red Dawn line has two or three different running speeds. And you can run in the canter speed right here and go pretty far. And you can even use cinematic mode as well and get pretty far. We can just run at this speed right here and just get it set like that and just run like this. And we can run quite a long ways. We're gonna run all the way to Armadillo here from Tumbleweed at a nice gentle trot and uh, see how much stamina we actually use. Brad, you guys can see we're coming into Armadillo real quick. We'll jump out of here and pull up our horse's stamina real quick. And you know, we're completely full completely full on stamina still. So there are some good tricks you can use to get around the game in Red and Line when you first start and you have a cheap horse and a cheap saddle like we're using right now. Just use these tips and you shouldn't have any problem at all. Enjoy the scenery. Now let's check out some of the cool tricks you can do with your horse. Now, some of these don't unlock until you bond your horse up. So make sure you're at full bonding level before you try any of these because they all are different. Some of them unlock at level two, some all the way at level four. So we're gonna go through all of them. Every horse has three basic buttons to use. Of course, you have the, you know, button to go. You have your button to slow down and stop. And you also have your jump button. We got to be moving to jump. There we go. Jump. Yeah, little trot. There we go. Perfect. So there are a couple ways to stop. Of course, if you're going, you can just hold down the stop button. It is L1 on PlayStation. I think it's LB, right? On Xbox. But there's also a better way to stop as well. If you hold down the stop button and the go button at the same time, which is X on PlayStation. So R1 and X, you'll actually do the sliding stop. I'll show you that real quick right here. So if you hold down both of those at the same time, you'll do a sliding stop and you can use the left stick to spin around if you want. That's an easy way to stop a lot quicker than the standard way. You can actually slide in and get to a good stop. There's also another way to stop really fast. 
before you learn that, you gotta learn how to rear. So to rear a horse, you hold down the R1 button, which is stop, and then tap the jump button. So we're holding down the stop button, and we tap the jump button, and we do a rear. Now you can do that to make your horse stop immediately. So if we run really fast, and then we initiate the rear right before we stop, it'll actually stop this horse almost immediately like that. Your horse does get pretty mad. Use the calm down button, the left stick, to calm it down a little bit. It's okay, El Cheapo, I know. We're just showing we're just showing the cow poke some pretty cool stuff. I know, you got some pretty cool tricks. So if we go really fast again, we'll do the rear, just like that, and it kind of do a complete stop if you need to stop really fast. One other cool trick you can do with your horse is trot in place. Just hold down the jump button. You're gonna sit here and trot in place. It's pretty cool when you do this because you actually can use the left stick and actually move each way to the left or, of course, to the right, just like that. Pretty awesome. Again, to initiate that, just hold down your jump button. Our last tip for today is the ability to hitch your horse. Now, if you come up to any hitching post, of course, you can hold down the hitch horse button. Most of them will have this prompt down there. I wish the Moonshine Shack had the prompt on the hitching, but it doesn't, and your horse will stay there. You can pretty much go walk around town and be good to go. But you can use this actually anywhere on the game. If we go way out in the middle of nowhere, we go way out here and we're out here hunting and you got to get off your horse and you don't want him to run off or if you get into a bounty and you don't want him to run off, you actually can come to a stop and then just hold down triangle anywhere in the world and your horse will actually hitch. I'm not sure what you actually put your horse stuck to, but there you go. Your hitch, your horse is hitched to something in the ground right there. You can actually do this anywhere you want and your horse will stay right there for you. It's really good if you come to a bounty and you want to hit your horse close to where you're going to get the bounty at, you can hit your horse there, do all the gunfighting, and be good to go. To showcase this, we got a bounty going on. We went up here. We're going to hit our horse right here. As you can see, he's all hitched up, and now we can fight all these guys, and our horse to stay right there. No problem. So as you can see, El Chivo stayed right here. We got him. We actually even put this guy on him real quick, and he'll just sit here with this, with this bounty on him as we fight these guys. As you can see, we're getting shot at right now. We're getting shot, gunfire's going by, and the horse is just staying right there with our bounty on him because he's tethered to the ground. I'm not sure what he's tethered in there too, but oh my gosh, let me get these guys out of here. Quit shooting me. And horse is still here with the bounty. Didn't take off running. So you can use that hitch method anywhere in the wilderness outside of any town. When you're in a town, you have to hitch to an actual post. Most of them work. Other than that, you can use it anywhere you want to keep your horse where you want them. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video is bonding your horse. Now, I am on a horse that is new to me. Just got him here recently. Haven't really bonded him up very much. Uh, the way to check your bonding, oh my gosh, it's a huge vulture, is to actually go into your player menu right here. If you go into your player menu, you actually can go over to your horse. Right now, we're riding Tester. That's his name. If you click on Tester, you can actually see exactly where your bonding level is right here. And if you look down the bottom left, you actually can see you're at level one of four and my progress to the next level. I'm gonna have 12 of 350 bonding points, I guess you can call them. Now to get more bonding points in this game, quite a lot of things you can do. You can ride your horse, you can care for your horse, or you can lead your horse. Now if we lead our horse, it actually gives us quite a lot. All you gotta do is just walk around with your horse for a while. You actually can get bonded up pretty quick. If you lead your horse for about 10, 15 minutes nonstop, you actually probably be fully bonded. We're gonna lead the horse around a little bit, see if we can get some of those points up. We were at 12 of 350. Just leading the horse around a little bit shouldn't be too bad. We probably should get some more points here, no problem. Other good ways you can sit here and take care of your horse. You can, you can brush your horse. As you can see, we getting points over there on the right-hand side, then you can just take care of your horse and pat your horse and take care of it. You can actually feed your horse as well. So you can't sit here and just sit here and grind, brushing, feeding, and all that. You can also lead your horse as well. So we'll, we'll give them a little bit of stuff. We'll brush for a little bit. We'll feed for a little bit. And then we can go back and check. And you can see that our stats are going up. Now, it does take quite a while to get all the way to bond level four. You want to do that, though, because that will increase your stamina and your health for your horse and the Distance you can whistle for your horse, as well as how well your horse listens to you. So if we go back to the stats now in player, we go back to tester here, you can see that we are above 12 now. Now we're at 37 of 350. Not too bad. And one little tip here as well as a bonus, Gus does have a trinket that works with horses. It does increase your bonding level. 
It permanently increases your bonding level by rate of 10%. Not too much there and it costs $500. I don't think it's actually worth it because it's pretty easy to bond horses. Like I said, leading a horse for 15 minutes or so, just nonstop, you could just walk from Armadillo to Tumbleweed and pretty much have a horse bonded up fully in no time. So wouldn't recommend getting that, but I did want to showcase it here in this video so you guys are aware of that. I do hope all these tips helped you guys out, learn a few new things with what a horse can do, a good ability to buy horse equipment as well as choose which horse you want. Anyone is great in the game as long as you have good equipment, just like we mentioned before. If you guys enjoyed this video, ever helped you out, make sure to smash that like button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel for more Red Dawn content, including tips and tricks, news updates, gameplay, just good old fashioned fun. Hope to see you on the prairie sometime, but until then, see you later.